Hi again. Okay, so now we're going to get into, we, got, we, we did a little bit about dogs, um, actually a lot about dogs, but we're going to get into cats. And this is kind of a fun thing. It's also a little bit difficult. And the reason I say that is because cats, because of their fur, unless they're Siamese or those hairless cats, I mean, there really are so much fur, which is the reason we love them and our kids love them is because everybody loves them is because they're so fuzzy and warm and except for the sharp fangs, I guess. But I mean, this is something that's always been interesting to me. And, the, and it was always a difficult thing. If you look at, just give you an example, sort of, this is sort of the classic image that you've seen of a cat. And it's really this shape. You've got the big ears like this, and that's sort of a classic shape. And the reason of that is because this is something that you're used to seeing. And the reason you see this is because of the fur, not because of the, uh, like in a dog where you see more of the anatomics of it, but it's because it's, it's of a very dynamic symbol, very, even going back to Egyptian times, you know, they've got, they worship cats. And you can see that these, the shape of them, a lot of times because of the size of the ears and because of the, you know, the, the, the sh oval shape of the heads and things like that, um, it has a tendency to do this. My, uh, my wife breeds Persians. They're nothing but fur, so you have to comb them all the time. And, and, or if you look at something like, say, the new, uh, the Alice in Wonderland, whether it be the Disney one or the new one, uh, you know, with the big treasure cat, which is this big round face with the, with the big teeth and the, you know, the big eyes, you know, and the, you know, with this sort of a thing with the slitty eyes and the little nose like this, you know, with the, with the, with the crazy teeth, you know, with this sort of that's, that's the Cheshire cat, you know, sort of thing, or the, the like I said, the Siamese cats that sort of have this thing with the little nose and the, with the whiskers that go off like this, you know. The thing that's interesting about this is that you can have a lot more fun with cats because they have a tendency, even when they're sort of laying down, they sort of have this sort of wrapped around, almost like a pillow feel. Their, their tail will sort of come around like this and their head might be in here like this with their ears down or, you know, as they're sleeping and you might just have this sort of a big bundle. You can't even see where the, you might see one paw in here like this. And very much that's sort of the shape. But what we have to do is try to figure out what's really happening underneath, right? So even though we have these, these very dynamic shapes, and I really say shapes because, I mean, as we get more into this, you're going to be dealing more with shapes and how they can dynamically change or, or help you create the, um, the effects that you want, regardless of what the animal is. And you can cross them around and so forth. I mean, I love the Cheshire Cat. I think it's hilarious. And, and I think that's interesting. But fundamentally, these cats do have the same structure as, as, as a dog. I mean, we're dealing with quadrupeds, it's just a little bit different. And it might be noteworthy sort of to say that if I was starting with the, as we always said, we start with the sphere for the hat, for the head, that you have to sort of say that if you really were gonna study the bone structure, I'm gonna get into this just so for a second so you kind of understand. You would have to understand that there is a very large eye socket area Inside there, I'm just going to do a sort of a cartoon version of, of, of a bone structure for a, for a cat. You've got sort of, you know, this muzzle that kind of comes out. And you've got these large, you know, canines and the teeth that kind of go back into the upper, you know, bone up in here like this. And then you have, you know, the bottom jaw, which is just like a human, is going to connect and kind of come down like this, you know, with the top. And it looks kind of scary, I know. But if you get into actually the bone structure of a, you know, you get these things in a, you know, you have the nasal cavities that are run sort of run like this. And, and then you have the skull area here and you have this, and then you'd have obviously the, the, uh, the, the, the spinal cord that would go up into the head like this. As you have this, you really do have sort of an interesting sort of scary figure, but it is really the basis of what we do when we're sitting there saying like, oh, how are we going to simplify this? I mean, they do have a large area it is, you know, you do have a large nose area and you sort of get into this, the point where if you're going to draw on top of, if you're going to start to caricature this, 